time is filled with swift transition. None on earth on move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring When your earthly friends forsake you Still more closely to him cling Come on everybody and hold to his hand God's unchanging hand yeah, hold God's unchanging hand Come on and build Your hopes on things eternal Yeah, and hold to God's unchanging hand Trust in Him who will not leave you What shall ever years may bring <laughs> When your earthly friends forsaken Still more closely to him cling Come on everybody and Hold God on changing hand Hold on God's on changing hand Come on and build Build your hopes on things eternal Yeah and hold to God's on changing hand Come on and hold, hold on, everybody hold, hold on, oh hold, come on and hold, no matter what it is, hold on, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of death, in the midst of disappointment, hold on, hold on, hold on. Church, hold on. Mother, hold on. Deacon, hold on. Brother, hold on. Sister, hold on. It won't be long. It won't be long. It won't be long. Come on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll turn your midnight into day. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No matter what it is. Hold on. Can't see your way. But hold on. Don't have no answers. But hold on. They walked away. But hold on, they talked about you, but hold on, they don't understand, but hold on, hold on, hold on, say it, hold on, hold on, I just gotta tell you, hold on, it won't be long, just build your hopes on things eternal. Yeah, and hold to God. Hold on. Hold on. It'll all be long, yes. 
Lift your hands and tell God thank you. Lift your hands and give God praise. Right where you're at. Hallelujah. 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 It's our even time. Hallelujah. It's our evening worship. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Saints of God. We thank God for your life. We thank God for who you are and what God is doing in your life. Thank the Lord that he has brought us one more time together around the word of God. And I just wanted to start off on a high note, amen, that we are to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Why, Pastor, did you want to start off on such a high note? Because there's so much that's going on. There's so much that we see around us. And we have to yet hold on. Amen. We have to yet take faith in God. Amen. For this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And so we're going to say good evening to each and every one of you. Amen. And God's blessings be upon you. Amen. The blessings, amen, that add no sorrow. The blessings of God that maketh rich and add no sorrow. It's good to see you all online. Amen. This evening, to God be all the glory and to God be all the praise. God bless you, Prophet Marlene Molay. God, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Sister Hurst, God bless you. Amen. Praise God, my daughter. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our sister Davis and God bless you, John Lewis. Amen. God bless you. Amen. To God be all the glory. God bless you, Sister Taylor, and to all of you, God's children. Amen. We're glad to be back one more time in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't care what's going on. Amen. We're glad. Amen. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. Because he is the reason. Amen. For this season. Amen. We are here in Jesus' name. As we get ready, amen, we say to you again, as always, amen, share, amen, with someone that perhaps does not know the Lord. Share with somebody that does know the Lord, amen, that needs, amen, to hear, amen, what God is giving me for this season. Amen. Praise God. Uh, perhaps hear the, the word that's in my mouth. Amen. Faith, amen. Praise God for this season season. Amen. The Lord bless you as you share. Amen. And as you come on and let people know, amen, that our evening worship is about to begin in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. And as you are getting yourselves ready, amen, I just want you to get your Bibles, get your pen paper. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to be in Hebrews tonight. Amen. Hebrews Amen. Chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. God bless you, Dr. Fairby. Good to see you on tonight. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 is where we're going to be tonight. Hallelujah, God. Amen. And we're going to rest in verse 3. Amen. But we're going to be, amen, kind of skipping around. But we're going to rest, amen, and amplify verse 3. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 and amplifying verse 3. Amen. Let me go ahead and pray. Amen. Praise God as we get ourselves ready. Set your hearts, set your minds. Amen. Praise God as we hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. At least what the Lord has shared with my mind and my spirit and my heart. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name. Again, Father, we come, Lord God, thanking you and praising you for all things. God, we praise you for this week. We thank you for the balance of this day, all that we were able to hear, all that we were able to see, all that you allowed our minds to perceive. And now, Father, as we come together around this platform, with this venue. God, as we come together, Lord God, around this word, for you knew, Lord God, that we would be here at this time. You knew who would be here and you knew why. So Father, we ask you, God, to give listening ears 
attentive hearts. Move every form of darkness, Lord God, that tries to get in the way in the name of Jesus. Every distraction, rebuke it for your glory and for your honor. Send deliverance where deliverance needs to come. Send healing where healing needs to come. Mighty God, send breakthrough where breakthrough needs to come. Father, we thank you for every fetter being broken, every chain falling, God, in the name of Jesus. For he that the Son set free is free indeed. We declare and we decree freedom today, God, in the name of Jesus, from every spirit that's not like you, from every force that's not like you, from every persuasion that's not like you. Mighty God, we declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Go free in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this word. We ask you, Lord God, to quicken it to our hearts, quicken it to our minds in the name of Jesus, that we might grow thereby and continue in this way until you say, that's enough. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory is yours in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen. To God be all the glory and to God be the utter praise. Amen. As we believe God, amen, for this time. As we believe God for, amen, this experience, amen. Get your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 12, and let's read from then verse 1 through verse 3 and kind of settle there in verse 3. In Jesus' name. The Bible then sharing. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. The word of the Lord. Settling on that third verse. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Amen. The word of the Lord. God bless you. Sister Karen O'Neill. Amen. We want to use amen for a subject on this evening as we run. As we run. As we run. Praise God. Saints of God, I am reminded and therefore called to remind you that we as believers are running in a race. We are running in a race. <clears throat> and if you are not saved today, if you are not saved today, we invite you to get in this race. There are all kinds of foot races. There are um, sprint and there are um, yeah, long distance races where people um, run to see who's going to get to the finish line first. 
But I, I want you to consider with me that this race that God has called us to is not a race where we're called to compete with anybody. This race that we're in is not a race to see who gets to the finish line first. First place, second place, third place, you lost. That's not the kind of race that this is. And for, for a very long time in my, my Christian life, I thought that this was that kind of race where, you know, there were, uh, I, I, I looked at the text and I thought to myself, there are some that are running and they're not going to make it and we're trying to run against each other and so forth. And, 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 and I found as I grew in God that that kind of persuasion that I had did not make sense. It didn't make sense that we are not competing with anybody to get to the finishing line. But as we as we embrace this kind of race, what it is, is um, it, it's a race that we get to the finishing line, that we get there, um, not, not in any particular pace as far as anybody else is concerned, but that we get there. For the Bible said, those that endure to the end the same shall be saved. So what we're talking about is we're talking about a marathon. We're talking about running in a race where we're trying to get to the end. We're believing God to get to the end, but not in regard to anybody else. We're just trying to get to the end. And and how did a man praise God? I, I come to this conclusion Amen. The Bible shares with us in Acts 10 and 34 that God is no respecter of persons, right? So God doesn't look at anybody else as being a better runner than anybody else. He is no respecter of persons. Also, we discover in Matthew 20 and 9 that Jesus gave a parable, amen, of giving a penny to each one that he told to go and to work in the vineyard. Some came at one time, some came at another time, but at the end of the day, everybody got the same penny. And so I looked at that. And, and, and then 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12, uh, Paul is saying to us that it's not wise for anybody to compare themselves with themselves. So the Holy Ghost led the Apostle Paul to tell us it's not a good thing for us to compare ourselves with ourselves or among ourselves. We don't compare ourselves among ourselves. We don't contrast and compare one with the other um, who's better and who's not and who's this and who's that. No, as a matter of fact, things are better than other things, but people are different. Y'all got to get this. People are different. People are not better than each other. People are different from each other. Things are better. Brands are better. Um, computers, one computer might be better than another. One, one, one device might be better than the other based on how they perform. But as far as people are concerned, we are different. We are not better because God says he is no respecter of persons. And then Jesus told us in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 that he would have none to be lost, but that all should come to repentance. And something that we need to consider, amen, even when we are at odds with somebody else, praise God, that the person that we have a problem with is the person that Jesus died for. Y'all got to get this. The, the person that we don't like we don't like their ways. We don't like their attitude. We don't like how they act and wh how they how they perform uh, in the earth, praise God, and how they do things. We don't like that, praise God. But God loves them and God is crazy about them. It is interesting to think that the person that we have a problem with, God is crazy about. 
I wonder what the person that usually has a problem with somebody and goes to somebody else and tries to get somebody else to have a problem with that person also. I wonder what they would think if they understood that the person that they have a problem with, God is crazy about. God loves them eternally. I wonder if they would try that same kind of thing that they try with other people. They would try it with God. Well, God, I don't like them, so I don't want you to like them. And God says, I love them eternally and with an everlasting love. Oh, my goodness. And so this race is not a race where we are competing one with another or we are looking to get to the finish line first, second, or third. Amen. But what we understand is that God, amen, God's ordained will toward our life is that our mindset be that we get to the finish line. It is a marathon, people. And when we think about a marathon, some, amen, come in in the beginning, amen, praise God, and some come in late, late, late at night, praise God, but they're all trying to finish the race. That is what we are called to do. We are called to finish this race, praise God. Each of us, and I saw, amen, my daughter say it, praise God, in regards to, amen, praise God, the... Um, lane. Amen. Stay in your lane. Yes. Each of us that are running in this race. Amen. We have a lane. Each of us that are running in this race have a lane. Praise God. Amen. Prophet. Amen. We have a lane in this marathon and we're called to run in this marathon in the lane that God has called us to run in, praise God, until we get to the end and until we get to the finish line. That is then the threat that comes against us, praise God. One, to wear us out before we get to the finish line, and two, to get us to switch lanes from the lane that God told us to run in. Y'all got to talk to me. <laughs> from the very beginning, when we look at Jesus and when God called him to begin his earthly ministry at the age of 30, the enemy tried to get him to switch lanes. When he took him, when he was led out into the wilderness, amen, praise God, to be tempted by the devil. Recall when Satan took him on a, in a great high place and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, if you just bow down, I'll give this all to you. What was he saying? Jesus, if you switch lanes, you'll be rewarded. If you switch lanes, you'll be rewarded. How about this? Jesus, you know, I know you're hungry. You've been fasting for a long time. Then make these stones become bread. Well, Jesus did not come to prove anything to anybody. He came to do the will of his father. So what was the enemy saying? Jesus, just switch lanes. Just switch lanes. How about this? Jesus, cast yourself down. The angels will bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus didn't come to test his father. He didn't come to tempt his father. And that's what he said. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus, if you would just switch lanes. One, switch lanes, Jesus. Two, switch lanes, Jesus. Three, switch lanes, Jesus. Amen. And Jesus, amen, amen, rebuked and used the word consistently to let the enemy know I'm not going to switch lanes. I know what my father has called me to do. I know what my job is. I know what my description is, and I'm not going to switch lanes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You have to know what your lane is. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to know what your lane is because the threat is, amen, to get you to switch lanes. If you can find a lane, a lane and this is what some do, a lane that seems to be more glamorous, a lane that seems to get you more attention. A, a, a lane that seems to be easier, perhaps. Amen. But what is the call of God on your particular life? What is the call of God on your particular life? You see, we are in now a new season. We are in a season now where there are a lot of challenges that we've never seen before. And there are some, praise God, that don't realize that even in this season, your lane is the same. 
Your lane is the same. You might use a different vehicle. You might uh, use a different platform. But your lane is the same. Thank you, Jesus. God has called you, amen, to stay on that and in that same lane to do the will and the purpose and the plan of Almighty God. And so the subject, amen, tonight is as we run. As we run in this lane, how do I stay in my lane, my God? As we run in this race, how do I get to the finishing line? As we run in this race and I'm in my lane, how do I maneuver the obstacles that are in the way that are in my lane? How do I keep my eyes, amen, in my lane and not worry about it looks like there are more obstacles in my lane than there are in somebody else's lane? How about that? It looks like, why is it that I got a, a deeper hole, amen, in my lane, a deeper valley, a higher mountain in my lane than somebody else has? So we are challenged then, amen, to stay in our lane and keep our eyes focused. Hallelujah to God. Keep our eyes focused, praise God, as we stay in our lane. And this is what, amen, praise God, the writer of Hebrews said, praise God, in regards to how we do it. He said in verse 3, consider him, here it is, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. The word contradiction means, amen, opposition. Consider the one that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. So what is the writer saying? The writer is saying that in order for you to get to the finishing line, in order for you to stay in your lane, in order for you not to complain about what your lane looks like in contrast or in opposition to somebody else's lane, you have to consider Jesus. That's it. Amen. Sister Patricia Davis, you have to stay focused on Jesus and how he did it. Because you see, we are disciples of Christ. We follow Christ. How did Jesus stay in his lane? Are y'all <laughs> How did Jesus know what his lane was and stay in? In his lane, even when the enemy tried to get him to move from his lane, he stayed in his lane. I know what my father has called me to do, and that is what I'm going to do. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I don't have to act like any other, amen, rabbi that has come before me. I don't have to act like any other religious leader that has come before me. My name, Jesus can say, my name is Jesus. I am the one that has been called to take away the sin of the world. And I have a lane that's been set before me. And that's the lane that I'm going to stay on. My God. We have to consider, verse 3 is our operative verse, praise God, where it said, consider him, look at him, concentrate on him, focus on him. He will give us the directive of how to stay in our lane, doing the will of God and working the works of God until Jesus says, that's enough. In consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. People will come to you and say, you need to be doing this, and you need to be doing that, and you need to be acting this way, and it's time to do this now. But what did Jesus tell you? So you have to know, oh my God, I feel this in my spirit. You have to know in your spirit, this is my lane that has been given to me by the Holy Spirit. I don't pray like anybody else. I don't sing like anybody else. I don't act like anybody else. I don't have to look like anybody else. In a day, praise God. Amen. I believe this is one of the reasons, again, why God shut the doors. Everybody trying to shout like everybody else, the same two-step, praise God. Everybody trying to speak in tongues like everybody else, praise God. Everybody trying to preach like everybody else, praise God. But what God is saying is, how about this? How about you get back to your lane? 
How about you get back to a place that I've called you, hallelujah, and do the will, amen, that I have called you to do for the purpose that you've been born. You've been born for such a time, a season as this. So now get back to where I told you to go and what I told you to do. In this season, praise God, amen, there are some that God has called, amen, and called them and anointed them to teach or to preach, praise God, amen, and they found, well, I don't know who to preach to now, I don't know how to operate these things, amen, so I'm going to do something else, praise God, the devil is a liar, get back in your, my God, I got to speak to somebody, get back in your lane, amen, do what the Lord told you to do. If God told you to write, write. If he told you to sing, sing. If he told you to sweep, sweep, praise God. Well, the door is not open. I can't sweep the church. Yes, you can, praise God. If they give you a way to get in there, praise God, sweep in Jesus' name. But do what the Lord told you to do. Thank you, Jesus. And that is what God is saying through the Holy Spirit today, praise God. Because God, amen, is, is very, very, um, amen, he, he is, he's concerned, amen, I believe in my spirit, praise God, concerned about people switching lanes based on what's going on. My God, but you have to stay in that lane that God has called you to stay in. Jesus, amen, was consistent unto death. Praise God, doing the will of Almighty God. Consistent. When we look, when we look around us, when we look around us, look at the things that are going on. You know, in we get sad. Right now, our, our lady boomer, praise God, is in a, a condition and we are praying and we're believing God for her, praise God. But we're constantly seeing sickness and all these things around us, and it takes a toll on us. But God is saying. In the midst of consistent death, consistent sickness, stay in your lane, stay there, be steadfast. There's, there's lack of movement. You can't move like you want to move, like you used to move. Stay there, be steadfast. Lack of being able to gather together in person and people are starting to get very weary with this, praise God. But stay there, be steadfast, praise God. Amen. There's a, a, a threat, praise God, of another swing of this virus coming back around, praise the Lord. Amen. And we don't know what to, what to expect, praise God. But what is your lane? Just be consistent in your lane. That's what I hear God saying. There are challenges in communications, praise God. Some of us, amen, are wizards with this technology and some of us are not wizards. But if God called you and you cannot go on any other other platform other than the the platform of the conference line and people are saying well go to zoom and go to the but you have a problem with that and every time you get on that praise god it causes problems it causes issues well whatever lane god has called you to be in use that lane to the best of your ability and to the greatest of God's glory. Whatever, even if you can't do none of the technological things, but you can pick up the phone and call. Amen. If that's all you can do, praise God. Just do that, praise God. But know what your lane is. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's financial insecurity. There's changes everywhere. There's political corruption. There's racial injustice, praise God. There's insensitivity all around, praise God, because of personal struggles that people are having, amen. People are acting strange, praise God. But then God is saying, in the midst of all that, all of that, I still want you, praise God, to maintain. I still want you to maintain. Keep a steady beat, praise God. Keep a steady beat, praise the Lord. And the Bible says, then consider Jesus. He is our prime example. Praise God. He is our prime example. The Bible said that Jesus, we have not a high priest that was not touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Jesus felt just what we feel because he was the God man. He was perfect God and perfect man. Some people think, well, you know, well, that was Jesus. That was God. But Jesus was the God man, perfect God and perfect man. When Jesus got on board with the disciples, praise the Lord, 
The Bible said he went to the hinder part of the ship, praise the Lord. And he laid down there because he was tired. And the storm arose. And there was a man called Jesus who was laying there, praise the Lord, even in the midst of a storm while the storm was raging and the wind was blowing, praise the Lord. The man, Jesus, was tired, so he laid down, praise the Lord, while the disciples were struggling in the storm. And then somebody said, well, you better go and wake up Jesus because he's there laying on a pillow in the midst of a storm because the man, Jesus, was tired. But watch this. When they woke up Jesus... The man Jesus that was tired yawned because he was a man. But the God Jesus, a perfect God Jesus, saw the condition, amen, of the disciples. The disciples were in, praise God. And the Bible said he rebuked the storm and he said, peace, be still. That was the God that spoke to the storm. God in Jesus that spoke to the storm. The man was tired, but God got up in him, praise God. The God who is Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and rebuked the storms and said, peace be still. He was perfect God and perfect man. In that he was perfect God and he was perfect man. The, the man, Jesus, showed us how to live in the earth realm showed us how to live in the earth realm. So people that say, well, that was Jesus, don't understand that he was perfect God and perfect man because the Bible said he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He felt what we feel. Whatever you feel, whatever struggles you go through in your flesh, Jesus felt it also, but he didn't yield to it. He didn't yield to it. Thank you, Jesus. He felt all those struggles. You say, well, what about this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he felt that one too. Every single struggle you feel, he felt, praise God. But he did not yield to those struggles because he was also perfect God. Thank you, Jesus. He was rejected by his family. Have you ever been rejected by a family member, praise God. Have you ever been in a place where somebody that was your 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 flesh and blood or related to you, praise God, found uh, that they didn't want to respect you and rejected you, praise God? Well, Jesus was rejected by his family. Jesus was rejected by his own people. John chapter 1, 11 through 13 shares with us, amen, that, that he came unto his own and his own received him not, but as many as received him to them, he gave power to become what? The sons of God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, how about this? Jesus had to be who God called him to be and move and stay in his lane, even though he was homeless. How about this? The Bible says and shares with us from Luke chapter 9, uh, verse 58, praise the Lord. Amen. Said, said the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. How about Jesus who has no particular place to lay his head? Amen. Praise God. But yet has to maintain the purposes and the will of God in the lane that Jehovah God had called him to. My God. He still had to preach. He still had to teach. He still had to feed them that would follow him, praise God, even while he knew that they are going to be the same ones that are going to say crucify him. Why? That was his lane. That was his lane. Remember Jesus, amen, praise God, when he prayed, amen, to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane, praise God. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. In other words, God, I don't want to change lanes. Father, I don't want to change lanes. This lane is getting kind of rough. It's getting kind of tough. And I feel something going on here. But but if, if I could, here it is, his humanity was speaking. God, could I change lanes? Father, could I change lanes? But wait a minute. This is why I came into the world. This is my purpose. This is my lane. This is my job. This is my job description. 
So God, nevertheless, not as my, not my will, but your will be done. Can I talk to somebody who feels like maybe it's time for me to switch lanes? No, no, no. This is the lane God has called you to. This is the place God has ordained you to. And he will give you grace for this space. He will give you grace for this space. This lane, he will give you grace for this space. There is graduation. There is, amen, praise God, a progression within this lane, praise God. But this is the lane that he's called you to, praise God. Jesus was misunderstood by his disciples. Luke chapter 18, verse 34 Amen. Praise God. When you when you get to your private places and you can read these things and study them, understand, amen, all these things that I'm trying to tell you. He was misunderstood by his disciples. How is it, amen, praise God, that some of us, amen, we're, amen, we're called to a particular ministry. And in that ministry, we're called to certain people. <laughs> and how would it be if you're called to those people and it looks like they never understand where you're coming from? They never understand why you're doing what you're doing. Well, the Bible says in Luke 18, 34, that they did not understand and they couldn't understand what Jesus was talking about oftentimes. But Jesus couldn't switch lanes and say, you know what? I know I prayed all night for y'all and, and, and y'all, I thought y'all was the ones, but you know what? Let, let me get another bunch of folk because y'all just kind of dull. Y'all, y'all just can't, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't getting it. I, I can't deal with y'all. Let me just, let me just, y'all just go someplace else. I'm going to choose me somebody else. No, no, no. Jesus knew that these were the 12. No matter how dull they seemed, no matter how, amen, out of it or un, unresponsive they might have seemed, Jesus knew that he was called to this 12 and he stayed in that lane with those 12. Thank you, Jesus. He stayed there. Jesus had to learn even as we do. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. Jesus, in his, in his humanity, had to learn obedience. What does it mean to be obedient? As, as, as God the Son, he always obeyed his Father. As God the Son, he always did the will of his Father. As God the Son, that's the only thing he knew to do. But but as, as the Son of Man, the Son of Man, he had to learn obedience. What does it feel like to do something that you don't feel like doing? What does it feel like? What is the experience of, of going through something that you don't want to go through? So Jesus had to learn that, the Bible says, through the things that he suffered. Why? So that he can be that example for us. Not so that we can say, oh, but that was Jesus. No, that we can say, yes, that was Jesus. My Savior and my Lord. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. He's my Savior and he's my Lord. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I am following after him. And if he could in his man, in his manness, in his humanness, learn obedience to the point that he even said now, he even said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Amen. Because there were certain things that he felt that he didn't want to go through in his humanity. But in his godness, he understood that this was his place. So what is God saying to us? I allowed Jesus. I allowed the word to become flesh. And dwell among you. So you can see how to do it. So you would know how to do it. So you would know if you draw nigh unto me. I'll draw nigh unto you. If you resist the devil. Hallelujah. If you resist the devil. He will flee from you. Praise God. If you resist him. Praise God. This is not a big fight. Praise God. All you got to do is stand still. And know that he is God. Hallelujah. Amen. And he will fight the battle for you. He had to learn obedience through the things that he suffered. He grew in favor with God and man, according to Luke 2 and 52 and 52. He grew in favor with God and man. That is in his humanity. This is the lane. This is the lane. This is the lane. For he that is divinity 
to become humanity. This is my lane. This is what I'm called to do. While, amen, he was, amen, praise God, with disciples, praise God, and while he was in his earthly ministry, and yes, submitting, amen, to the will of the Lord, praise God, amen, look at them, look at he that would die for them on the cross of Calvary, Jesus, who is our Christ, the amalgamated lamb of God, the Pascal lamb, the one that has come to take away the sin of the world, how they would spit upon him, I come to redeem you, and you spit upon me. I come to redeem you, and you rail on me. I come to redeem you, and you rip my body apart, praise God. But this is my lane. This is my lane. This is my lane. They ridiculed him. They said, you healed others. Heal yourself. You saved others. Save yourself, praise God. How did Jesus continue to stay in his lane. How did Jesus continue to stay in his lane? The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him. For the joy that was set before him. For the joy that was set before him. Amen. He was able to stay in his lane because of the joy that was set before him. He knew that something better was coming. The joy that was set before him, amen, praise God. He had a mind of purpose. The reason I'm in this lane is to get something else done. The reason I'm in this lane is to purpose something, to cause something to happen that has not happened yet. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame looking unto Jesus that's how he did it it was joy and when we say joy we're not talking about giggle giggle laugh laugh we're talking about something deep down on the inside that lets you know praise God that there's somebody in charge that's doing something in the background Doing something, praise God, that's going to cause something wonderful to take place, praise God. If I continue in this lane, if I continue doing what I'm doing, if I continue working the way I'm working, if I continue moving the way I'm moving, praise God, there is somebody who's called me to this, praise God, that knows more than I know. Hallelujah. That has more power than I have that is able to cause things that be not to be to that that are not to cause to come into existence praise god that there is somebody that's greater that is greater amen praise god that is backing my purpose and my stance and my move praise god this is why amen i believe the lord is saying to us praise god to amen to consider this race that we're in praise god and as we run, praise God, to consider Jesus, praise God, as we run to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, as we run, praise God, to know that we are not competing with anybody else, as we run, praise God, to know that our particular lane may not look like anybody else's lane, but we're called to stay in there and hang in there, praise God, in the purpose that God has called us to do. Amen. That is why it's so it's so powerful that you can look to the left or right and see what everybody else is doing and still say, okay, but this is my lane. I, I, I really don't, I, it doesn't, it's, it's all right. It's all right for this one. It's all right for that one. But this is what God called me to do. This is God's purpose in my life, praise God. And when you understand that, praise God, believers, beloved, when you understand that, praise God, that's what makes you successful in God. Successful in God, that's what God told Joshua. You're going to meditate, meditate in this word day and night. And you're going to find good success and I'm going to make your way prosperous. Prosperity in God is not how many toys you have at the end of the day. Prosperity in God is not cars and houses and all this kind of stuff. Prosperity in God is you being able to fulfill, fulfill the will of God for your life. The will of God for your life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And so this is what 
Jesus' call was to stay in that particular lane and to fulfill the will of God for his life, that we might be saved, praise God, that we might be called by the name of Jesus, that we might be washed in the blood of Jesus, that he might be the intercessor seated on the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us, praise God, that we might be our our father's children, praise God, that we might be sons and daughters of the true and living God, that we might walk in the earth realm, praise God, but we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, praise God, that I am just a stranger, hallelujah, and a pilgrim here, and I'm just traveling through, praise God, on my way to a promised city, praise God, the new Jerusalem, praise God, but while I'm here, I've got a purpose, I've got a job, I've got a position in God. Hallelujah. And doesn't disappointment come? Doesn't stuff come, praise God, to try to sideswipe you? Doesn't stuff come, praise God, to try, amen, to make you feel like, uh, you know, I'm done in this lane. I'm done. No, 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 no. No, you're not done, praise God. You're not done until the Father say you're done, praise God. Yet I know some people say, well, I'm done. Put a fork in me. No, 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 no. You're not done because God's going to put some more grace in you, praise God, to complete the race that he's called you to, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Not when you get to a particular age. Because God don't care nothing about how old you are. He don't even care nothing about how what's going on in your body right now, praise God. Because that's why he heals you. <clears throat> I've told you time and time again, praise God, amen, that the blessings of the Lord are connected to the assignment, praise God. Why do you, God don't heal you just because he want to heal you? He heals you because there's something that God has called you to do, praise God. He heals you, he delivers you, he brings you out because you're not finished doing what he called you to do, praise God. Amen. Praise God. I told you about when my legs swole up. Praise God. And they didn't even know. They called it gout. They, one doctor called it gout. Somebody called it somebody else. Praise. But whatever it was, praise God, I realized, God, there's something that I need to do, God. And can I do it with my leg like this? I don't think so. Praise God. So what has to happen is, God, you're going to heal my leg so I can continue to do what you've called for me to do. And didn't God do it? Praise God. He healed my leg. Praise God. Won't God do it? Won't he bring your blood pressure down? Won't he bring praise, high blood pressure down? And he, he'll bring low blood pressure up. Praise God. Won't he regulate your sugar levels? Praise God. He will do it, praise God, but it's connected to the assignment. God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to operate? Well, God will heal you, amen, so that you can continue to do what is called for you to do, praise God. It's not over till it's over, praise God. It doesn't matter what the doctors say, praise God. It doesn't matter what Fauci say, the president say, the government say about anything that's going on, praise God. You have a lane, and in your lane, you have an assignment, that assignment is given to you, ordained you by Almighty God, and that is what God has called you, amen, to adhere to, praise God. The only time you mess up is when you get out the lane and try to be something that God has not called you to be and act in a way that God has not called you to act. Amen. And do what God has not called you to do. That's when you mess up. Praise God. But as long as you're doing it just the way the Lord said, do it. Praise God. No matter what. God is going to do, amen, what he, he's, what he's going to do, praise God, so that you can be who God has called you to be, praise God. How, how did he do it? The joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and he despised the shame. The joy, it was a mind of purpose. I do what I do because I know there's a result that's coming at the end. Thank you, Jesus. And it's a good thing. And it's a good thing. And God has a purpose. And God has a purpose. And God has a plan. And so that's why I do what I do. That's why I move the way I move. That's why I operate the way I operate. Because I have a divine mandate from Almighty God. And so you have to know it's the enemy's job to steal, to kill, and to destroy while you're in your lane. To steal stuff from you, to discourage you, to destroy things around you, to discourage you, 
Amen. To do whatever he can do to discourage you in your lane. Why? So you can get out of your lane. So you can stop running, praise God. So you can go somewhere and sit down and shut up. But the devil is a liar. I won't sit down. I won't shut up, praise God. I'm going to do this thing until the Lord says that's enough. So what is God saying? God's saying, I want you to keep on running. And running for you might not look like running for somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. Running for you might not look like running for somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. You've got to know what running looks like for your life. What running looks like for your life, praise God. And keep on running this marathon until you get to the perfect end, praise God. Your goal, your goal is to get to the finish line and to do the things that God has called you to do in the meantime, until you get to the finish line. That's why the Apostle Paul, amen, shares with us in 2 Timothy, and I'm closing. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. He said, when he came to the end of his life, and no doubt looking, praise God, at Nero's chopping block, and understood that his head was going to be severed from his body. Amen. Praise God. He writes to his son, Timothy, and he says, praise God, I am not, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. But look at what he said. I have fought a good fight. Second Timothy four and seven. I have fought a good fight. I have finished. Look at what he said. My course. I stayed in my lane. I have finished my course. I've done what the Lord told me to do. I have preached to the Lord, to the ones that told that God told me to preach to. I have ministered to the ones that God told me to minister to. I've gone to the, the places God has called me to go to. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. God gives us the faith to finish the course and to stay in the lane that he's called us to stay in. But we have to know, amen, praise God, what that lane is, what that course is, amen, and stay there, praise God. You don't have to talk like somebody else. You don't have to preach like somebody else. You don't have to teach like someone else. You don't have to sing like anybody else, amen, praise God. You don't have to operate like anybody else, but you do have to do it the way God told you to do it. You do have to operate the way God told you to operate in it. Operate in it. Who has the right to tell you how to do what God told you to do? Praise God. Amen. Yes, we hear, amen, we have teaching and we have instruction, praise God, that helps us to, amen, elevate, if you will, in what we are called to do, to do it better, to become the best us that we can be. I want to be the best me that I can be. Praise God. But I want to be anybody else. I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. You see, somebody might have said to the Apostle Paul, Well, Paul, you've been preaching. You've been teaching. This is good. You've been traveling around different places. You've been, amen, miracles, working miracles. This is good. But, but Paul, I, I noticed something. I ain't seen you dipping nobody in the water. Didn't Jesus say to Go into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Paul, I didn't see you dipping nobody in the water. Well, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, that's why you got to know your call. You have to know your call. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. This is Paul speaking. He said, for Christ did not send me to baptize. I'm, I'm going to tell you how strict Paul was when it comes to his course. He said, for Christ did not send me to baptize. Perhaps somebody that was traveling with him, amen, did the baptizing. But he himself understood that was not his call. That was not his call. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, but the cross of Christ should be made of, that the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. In other words, in other words, 
for you, praise God, that, that, that have a problem with, amen, I'm just called to teach. And my pastor is going to do the baptizing. Let the pastor do the baptizing. And you do the teaching. Mm-hmm. And also, what I'm trying to say is, what is God's purpose and plan for you specifically? And stay right there. Stay right there. Praise God. And as you stay right there in that lane and that place and that call that God has for you, he will bless your life. He will prosper your life. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will do whatever it takes, amen, for you to complete the course that God has called you to complete. And you can't go anywhere until you complete the course that God has called you to run in. Thank you, Jesus. And so we thank God. We thank God, amen, praise God, for this this word as we run. As we run, we keep Jesus in the forefront of our minds. As we run, we keep Jesus in the forefront of our eyesight. And praise God, we put blinders on. How did Jesus run? How was Jesus successful? This is how I'm going to run, by considering him, by considering him in all that's going on, in all that's happening, in all that's going on around us. God, help me. Help me to know the call and the place that you've called me to and to stay in that lane for your glory and for your honor. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine upon you. I want you to be encouraged in your lane. Be encouraged in your call. Be encouraged, amen, in what God has called you to do. And yes, Minister Minister Jefferson, praise God, run this race with patience run this race with endurance. This is why the, uh, the the writer of Hebrews, amen, had said to them, praise God, that we have a cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us, praise God. And they've already gotten to the finishing line. And what, they, what are they saying? They're saying, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. And so what I'm saying to you and what we have to consistently say to is, to each other is, You can do this. It may seem hard. It may seem, amen, difficult. It may seem challenging. At times often is. But what is God's call for your life? And if God called you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Praise God. And at the finishing line, you're going to be able to say that there's a crown that's waiting for me. You're going to be able to know that there's a crown that's waiting for you. Because you've held out to the perfect end. We thank God for your life. And we thank God for your endurance. And we say, praise God, to hold on and hold out. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Just stay prayerful. Just stay prayerful. And watch God do it. Just stay prayerful and watch God do it. And he'll work it out for you. Hallelujah. Pray, pray, pray. Trust, trust, trust. Pray, pray, pray. And trust, trust, trust. God's going to enlarge your territory and give you everything that you need in this season to perform his will. Amen. Increase. Increase. Enlarge my territory. Oh, Lord, bless me indeed. I pray for increase. Ooh. 
increase, increase, oh Lord, let's pray, enlarge my territory, oh Lord, bless me indeed. I pray for increase, hallelujah, I pray for increase, keep your hands upon me, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ask of you. Hallelujah. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. Oh, Lord. Bless me. God, I want to stay where you want me to be. I want to do what you want me to do. I pray for increase. I pray for increase. Keep your hand upon me. So no evil can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Increase, 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 increase my faith, increase my joy, increase my peace while I stay in my lane. Hallelujah. Oh, I pray for increase. Enlarge my Praise God. I pray. I believe. I receive. Oh Lord, bless me indeed. Increase, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, in this season. In this season, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. You know the season that we're in. You know the time that we're in, Lord God. You know the challenges that are out there. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus, as we stay the course, as we know the course that you've set us to, Lord God, as we set our minds to see you, Lord God, to fix on you, God, to know you in the midst of all that we go through, God, and to believe to receive that you bless us according to the assignment that we walk in. We give you praise. We give you the honor and the glory as you increase us in grace, increase us in your peace, increase us in your joy. God, we thank you that we're going to make it to the finishing line. We're not comparing ourselves among ourselves. We're not comparing ourselves with ourselves. We're not looking over in anybody else's lane. But we're thanking you, God, for our lane that you've called us to such a time as this. 
Now, God, we give you the praise. The honor and the glory is yours. Bless those that are sick, those that are shut in. Save the unsaved. Reclaim the backsliders in the name of Jesus. Encourage somebody this day in your word and in your will. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, what you have done, and what you're getting ready to do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and for his sake, amen and amen. God bless you, believers. God bless you. We thank God for your life. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of this evening. Don't worry about a thing. God got you. God got us. Amen. Stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the course. Amen. Amen. And have a wonderful rise and a strength, strengthened rise in the morning to continue to work the will of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace is my prayer. Thank God for you and thank God for your life. Good night, believers. Enlarge my territory. Oh, Lord, bless me indeed. I pray for increase. Good night, believers. Stay blessed.